In recent years, more and more people have expressed strong opinions against the idea of having a regular job. For 40 hour builder, a week not. work week is bullshit. Bullshit. It's you're not bullshit. productive at that, that, that level. Nobody should do it. Many well-meaning influencers have encouraged us to start a business. Go do your thing. You're gonna die. It's going to end. Something bad is gonna happen. Start that company. Quit that fucking bullshit job. These people tell us to operate from the right side of the quadrant, become business owners or investors and escape the rat race. The whole message is simple. Dream big. But there is a problem. While dreaming big is an attractive idea, most young entrepreneurs often interpret that advice in a way that makes them fail in business. On Tuesday, 13 December 1864, the president of Paraguay, Francisco Solano Lopez, declared war on Brazil. Such a war seemed inevitable because almost all the countries in South America had land disputes or boundary conflicts with their neighbors. Many treaties had been signed, but the problem still remained. For example, the Treaty of Tordesillas was signed by Portugal and Spain on July 7, 1494, but by the 1700s, it became ineffective. On January 13, 1750, the Treaty of Madrid was signed between the Portuguese and Spanish, but again, both countries weren't satisfied. The Treaty of San Ildefonso was signed on October 1, 1777, and the Treaty of Badajoz on June 6, 1801. But none of these treaties worked at making peace. So, among a few other things, by 1864, the Paraguay president, Francisco Lopez, decided to settle the dispute with weapons. At first, Lopez started a war with Brazil. But while at war with Brazil, he needed to pass through the territory of Argentina. And when Argentina denied a request for the transit of a Paraguayan army across its territory, Lopez declared war on Argentina as well. Now, this is where I'm going with this story. Since countries in this region were having disputes because of land, it does make sense if Paraguay could defeat Brazil and Argentina in war and take their land. Well, that's what it means to dream big. The idea of dreaming big even makes more sense if you look at the size of Paraguay on the map. This is Paraguay, right here. This is Brazil, and this is Argentina. Since these guys had disputes about land and boundaries, if the president of this country can successfully defeat this big country and this big country, ha, ah, what a great victory that will be. Is that not what it means to dream big? Well, unfortunately, that's foolishness. Before Francisco Lopez knew it, Uruguay had joined the war. With the two biggest countries of South America and Uruguay against Paraguay, the war became the deadliest and bloodiest interstate war in Latin America history. Paraguay was destroyed and occupied for about six years, and on March 1, 1870, Francisco Lopez himself was killed. While some of you watching this video might think Francisco Lopez was stupid, most young entrepreneurs are exactly like him. Like Lopez, we're this small country. However, we wake up one day and listen to some motivational messages telling us to dream big. The starting point of great success and achievement has always been the same. It is for you to dream big dreams. We then think we can take this country and this country. Many young people wake up one day and decide to start a business, which is a good thing. But the first goal these people set is to make $100,000 in the next six months. Some even set goals to make a million dollars in the next 12 months. To these people, that's what it means to dream big and they are very excited about such dreams. But then a few months after launching their business, the reality sets in. 
I mean, what tends to happen is it's sort of quite exciting for the first several months yeah. of, of starting a company. And then, then reality sets in, things don't go as well as planned. Because these people have rented expensive offices, put all their life savings into the business, hired 10 people and manufactured a massive amount of products nobody buys, they are overwhelmed. From there on, they do a few other silly things and then lose the business. Now, here's the truth about entrepreneurship. You'll probably make no meaningful progress in your life in your first three to five years in business. 1995 to 1999, we failed. We go nowhere our business because every, nothing was ready. The reason for this is that building a business is difficult, difficult and difficult. Creating, try, trying to build a company and have it succeed is like eating glass and staring into the abyss. Now, the best way to go through those difficult years is to think small and not think big. You see, when Otto von Bismarck became the Prime Minister of Prussia in 1862, he knew he needed wars. But unlike the Paraguay president, Francisco Lopez, Bismarck had a better strategy. Instead of confronting powerful enemies, Otto von Bismarck went after weak enemies. Because of his strategy, his wars were short and decisive. For example, he started a war against Denmark on 1st February 1864, and on 30th October the same year, Denmark surrendered. The war lasted only 8 months and 29 days. He did a similar thing with Austria and France. By going after weak enemies, Bismarck boosted the morale of his men gradually. Now, in 1871, Bismarck unified Germany into a nation, forming the German Empire. With such an empire, Bismarck could now take on a bigger enemy. The lesson in this story is this. If you want to build a successful business, you have to set small goals while starting. First, aim at little victories. These little victories will boost your morale and increase your self-esteem. With improved morale, you can now take on bigger and bigger dreams. All through history, that's how people build empires. For example, in Chapter 2 of John D. Rockefeller's biography written by Ron Chernow, there's an account of how Rockefeller worked, saved money, and invested $50 at 7% interest. One year later, he made a $3.50 profit from his investment. It was this little profit that made a life-changing impression on Rockefeller. And on page 32 of this same book, Rockefeller said, The impression was gaining ground with me that it was a good thing to let the money be my slave. The same impression was what Warren Buffett had when he made his first 50 cents selling Coca-Cola. My grandfather had a grocery store, so I went to my grandfather and I said, uh, how about giving me a deal on Coke so I can sell it around the neighborhood? And he sold me at the rate of six bottles for a quarter and I went around and sold it for a nickel each. A similar impression was what Mark Cuban had when he started a postage stamp business and made $50. I started a stamp company. I started with a quarter and bought a stamp and left with $50, thinking, hey, if I could do this, I could do anything. The idea here is simple. When starting a business, you set your goal as small as possible because what you need right away is not a big success. What you need right now is a morale boost. For example, if you're 17 years old and have never started any business before, don't set a goal to make a million dollars in the next 12 months. That's like Francisco Solano Lopez thinking he could defeat Brazil and Argentina. Instead, let your first goal be to make $100. Because this goal is small, your mind believes that it's possible. Hence, you're encouraged to pursue it. Also, because this is a small goal, you can achieve it fast. Because you achieve this goal fast, the success boosts your morale, which then makes you believe that you can make $1,000. After making $1,000, your self-esteem improves, which makes you believe that you can make $10,000. Making $10,000 boosts your morale, and now you're determined to go for $100,000. This is what the Harvard professor, Teresa Amabil, and her colleague, Stephen Kramer, call the Progress Theory. In their 2011 books, The Progress Principle, on page 90 of The Progress Principle, Teresa and Stephen wrote, People develop an increasingly strong sense of self-efficacy each time they make progress. This is the same principle Admiral William H. McCarvin wrote about in his 2017 book, Make Your Bed. In Make Your Bed, McGravin wrote, 
If you want to change the world, start off by making your bed. If you make your bed every morning, you will have accomplished the first task of the day. It will give you a small sense of pride, and it will encourage you to do another task, and another, and another. The whole point of this analogy is that when starting a difficult endeavor like a business, the best strategy is to take baby steps. In his 1968 book, The Double Helix, James Watson wrote about how he and his colleagues Francis Crick started living in the laboratory as a result of the morale boost they got when they made the progress on their work as regards DNA structure. In that book, Watson wrote, my morale skyrocketed, for I suspected that we now had the answer to the riddle. Throughout history, we have seen people who decided to eat an entire shark for a breakfast. We know of the French Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte, who in March of 1813 decided to fight with more than six countries, Austria, Progia, Russia, the United Kingdom, Portugal, Sweden, Spain, and a part of Germany. Huh. We know about Alexander the Great, who in 334 BC started a military campaign to conquer the whole world. In this video, I've told you about the president of Paraguay, Francisco Lopez, who in December of 1864 decided to take on three countries that are ten times bigger than him in their combined sizes. History is filled with people who think they can swallow the mountains, outrun horses, or build an empire tomorrow morning, even though they have no previous experiences. Such people almost always get destroyed. Otto van Bismarck's strategy is the surest way to build an empire. While starting a business, set small goals. Let small victories boost your morale before you dare something big. Now, if you're truly interested in building a successful business, you'll definitely have to know how to sell, because selling is the most important business skill. That is why I made the video on your screen. This video on your screen teaches you how to make people buy whatever you're selling. Click the video on your screen now if you're interested in learning how to make money from whatever business you're starting. Thanks for watching our videos.